Castleford keen to get back on a winning path after last weekend's Yorkshire Cup final defeat. And Warrington, who've not had the best of starts to the season, eager to put one over their old rivals. And referee Jerry Kershaw, who actually refereed this match last year when Warrington won by 40 points to 30. And he's got a birthday tomorrow, he'll be 45. I think, David, both sides will feel they have something to prove in this one. Well, that's right. Uh, Warrington are languishing uh, mid-table, uh, haven't had all that success. Whereas, of course, uh, to lose the Yorkshire Cup final one weekend and come back into the lead the next, one wonders whether Cass can retain their points. Blake's kick struck a Castleford man and went straight out. And there'll be a scrum over in front of the dugouts. Referee Kershaw, who's a schoolmaster, seems to have plenty to say at the moment. And there'll be an offence here, and the penalty is awarded to Castleford. Martin Kettridge. Hoofs it, and uh, finds a very good touch indeed, no more than a couple of feet from the Warrington try line and Castleford unbeaten at home this season they've won all their five matches 224 points scored it's an incredible average let's see if they can add to it here as Beardmore well, found his brother John Joyner is pegged back by Billy McGinty and Castleford trying to set themselves up have a very good chance here and Boothroyd took the pass at the second attempt Kevin Ward, he's been a regular try scorer against uh, Warrington over the years. And there's no way through for him that time. And Warrington would have been disappointed had the bit. Oh, but that's a straightforward try. What a start to the game for Grant Anderson. And Warrington's defence was really prized wide open there. John Joyner involved, and Grant Anderson giving us the perfect start for the match. Well, Cass started like they hope to keep going with, and this is a great boost to them. But this gap has opened up in a Warrington defence that Tony Barrow will be rather surprised about. I think he'd be very disappointed about it too, and uh, Anderson's seventh try of the season, and one of the easiest for him. Well, they've started uh, as they would like to have started. Uh, straight away, the ball is moved out wide. And, of course, Anderson takes it and breaks open the easy defence, and Tony Barrow will have a lot to say about that. There should be two more points to be tacked on here by Martin Ketteridge, who doesn't let anybody down. Six millimetres and the perfect psychological start, just what Daryl van der Ville will have wanted. Nicely worked, and Ronnie Dwayne was steaming onto the pass. Davidson. Roach. This time it's against Steve Roach, the big Australian prop forward I guess the feeling that referee Kershaw has got wind that this could be quite a stern contest and wants to stamp on it straight away I think right uh, Warrington have come over here obviously looking for points and uh, they're going to make it very difficult for Castleford the unfortunate part about it at the moment is both sides have players who are more concerned about individuals and about the game and Roach went in on Bob Beardmore there. The crowd beneath me over this side of the pitch didn't approve. And the referee is going to have to be eagle eyed. And that pass spilled by Anderson. So his opposite number six, John Woods, was there. 
and Roach has seen plenty of the ball. This big number eight from Australia here is known as Blocker. And this man, Davidson, is known as Biff. And what a break he's made, he's got the support. And there should be a try if they get this one right. Well, Blake was stopped, now Woods, they're still always queuing up. And if they've got that ball out, Mark Foster on the left wing. Was out, was going to counted over as it is a penalty has been given to Warrington and the tackle. And he's going to kick a goal. Well, John Woods last year had a momentous game against uh, Castleford. He got a hat trick here of tries and he kicked six goals. He's got the most phenomenal points record. So this should be certainly within his capacity. It is. Warrington have their first points of the game. And John Woods adds two points to his amazing record. It's 6-2 to Castleford. But John Woods, uh, the most astonishing point scorer in the game, 3,267 points in his career, and he's only five tries short of 200. Woods was also the first man ever this season to reach 2,000 points in the first division. Davidson and now there's a running chance but Marchant was there smartly to stop Tony Fornelli Tamati and the crowd felt that uh, Tamati's boot then went straight into Ronnie Gibbs's face and the touch judge is on and I have no doubt that that's what the touch judge is going to tell referee Kershaw well, Rambo Ronnie has seen it all before. He felt that one well. And he's gone down looking groggy. But Tamati certainly stamped on him there in the tackle. Had to play the ball. So yet another penalty goes to the statistics. And now it's Davidson who's roughing up plunge. And referee Kershaw is going to have to do something about this. Well, incidentally, that's the second time Davidson has been spoken to. It'll be interesting to see what Jerry Kershaw, Kershaw has to say. Or, or, more importantly, what he might be doing. And he's giving him the card. And he's away into the sim bin for ten minutes. But for Les Davidson, who's come back from his honeymoon, this is certainly no honeymoon for anybody. Stupid penalty to give away, no doubt about that. And uh, it's given Kettridge his third kicking opportunity. He's accepted one out of two so far. And now it's one out of three. So it's an escape for Warrington, really. They could have been a lot further behind. That's right, because they had that two points of John Woods' penalty, and that sort of uh, stabilised the Warrington side. For that to have gone over then, uh, would have left them in a bit of trouble. Roach really felt the weight of the Castleford pack, almost all of them in there. And now Blake's turn to kick, a very good angle kick as well. So it's got Horro chasing back, and Belch is with him. Well, Belcher took an advantage of a slip by Des Drummond to make some ground down the left touchline, and that was quick thinking by the Australian fullback. Very quick, and uh, he moved and made some 25 yards then while Des was still getting up off the floor. And Boothroyd's done well here to find Belcher again. He stayed up in that position. So Castleford at least uh, willing to throw this ball around, and Ketteridge ran into a brick wall then. A brick wall named Tamati. Ward tries to burst the tackle, finds Anderson at his shoulder, and Giles Boothroyd, well, the try is given. He scrambled over. And again, questions must be asked in the Warrington defence.
Well, Warrington's defence are coping very well, despite the fact they were one forward down. But when Ward goes on the rampart, he knows they've got to score and take advantage fully of it. Slips up the ball well, and the backing up and support is superb by Castleman. And this has been a hallmark of their play. And although he's pulled down just short, the momentum allows him to carry over. And Ketteridge adds on his second goal. And so 12 points to two it is. And noticeable how Warrington missed Davidson there. That's right, when they won short, it's always difficult to plug up the gaps, and uh, Cass took advantage of that. Of course, Warrington's defence has been under great pressure, and uh, knowing that they are one man down, Castlewood know they've got a score, and this opening is prized open, and good support play enables Castlewood to get the try they were looking for. But, uh, chances here for Castlewood, surely. Tony Marchant absolutely taken out by the collar there by Fornelli. Kevin Ward barging his way there, over on the far side, Davidson is preparing to come back on. There he is in your, at the back of your picture. Can Cass get a try before he comes on? Well, Warrington have the possession. And Davidson's back on. And here is Davidson, sir. He's had a breather. So Warrington will want him to do something more constructive now. Beardmore, nice little reverse ball for Kettridge, which has got him tearing into the gap. Tackled by Gregory and Dwayne together. <laughs> Useful kick from Bob Beardmore again, but a bit more space this time for David Lyon. has come inside for a bit of the action. He's not seen much of the ball on the wing, that's for sure. That's better. Davidson opened up a gap there, which McGinty went into. Blake. A good long pass for John Woods. Oh, goodness. Typical John Woods. And he sets off for that line. He's got a man inside him. Eventually gave the ball and Costa takes it on the lead. Marchant's got him. That was really John Woods at his best. Fleet of foot, saw the gap. And Blake now on the line. Not a good ball from him though. It's picked up by Gregory. And they really do need something. Roach keeps it going. Thornley. Well, everybody slipped there. The last tackle now. Warrington need a score and Blake will put a little grubber kick in well England did well to get that ball away and Bob Beardmore runs into Davidson Referee Kershaw thought of another word to Davidson then and then didn't bother. Oh, and the intercept should be an interception now. It must be it's Gregory eventually who picked it up. As Gibbs trying to do the right thing and get the ball away, and Drummond puts that left shoulder of his down and runs straight into Boothroyd. Woods again and again, he's trying to get through that gap. But this time they've nailed him. John Joyner did. And Woods, because he lashed out with his hand, was told off by the referee. And you sense that whenever Davidson has the ball, that's a bit of going to be gunning for him. And tackled by Kevin Beardmore. 
Tamati. Oh, that's a real fumble that you don't expect from someone of the quality of Woods, and he's very annoyed with himself. Well, it's a pity, really, because they are far more purpose to their play now. There's a better pattern emerging, and they are trying to push the ball up the middle with the supports on the outside. Well, and England turned inside that tackle, as a result of which Belcher is steaming through. A good surging run from the full-back. The Castleford momentum is bringing them forward in droves now. Vital for Warrington that they hold out until half-time, or at least get another try themselves. Anderson is blocked. Let's see what happens back there as Drummond falls on it. Touch judge is on. Well, I think Davidson might get another ticking off here. He's going to be lucky to stay on this afternoon. Well, he seems uh, hell-bent on going off the field rather than staying on it. He's uh, involved in just about everything that's happening. The scoreboard in the background that tells you that Castleford are leading 12-2. They're running the ball here, and there's going to be another penalty for offside right in front of the sticks. And I'll be amazed if Ketridge doesn't attempt to kick this one. And will do. Well, Warrington have only themselves to blame for this situation as Kettridge pops another one through the middle and Castleford lead 14-2. Roach, sensible play from the front forward, and here are Warrington with a golden opportunity. Well, Woods' his pass there looked as though it might be forward. Blake almost seemed to take his eyes off it as though he expected the whistle to come. They've well, spurned the chance again. They can, they can ill afford to lose those chances because they, they have a bit of an uphill battle. The Castlewood side just really bubbling, moving the ball about quite a lot and uh, totally making the defence very suspect. But there are warning singles there for Castleford that have been opened up two or three times now. However, Belcher. Oh, March and drops it, and there must surely be a try for Thornley. He's only got to fall on the ball. A disastrous mistake by Tony Marchant. And Thornley has taken full toll of it. And a minute before half time, that's come at a crucial stage. Well, Warrington has spurned one or two chances and it's left now to Castlewood when they're trying to break out the defence. Tony Marshall put the ball to ground, making it a simple task for a tap ahead for Thornley to score. And it's hardly a, bare, uh, a true reflection of the first half if John Woods puts this one through, which he's not been able to do. Warrington would have been much closer, but as it is, they're still very much in the game at 14-6. Drummond saw an opening there as the Hooter signals the end of that first half. And once we got over the niggly early stages, uh, there's been some good football, but Castleford perhaps should have had more points on the board. Well, they really should have. They moved the ball about, they played an expansive game, they sell slow down, they forgot their defeat last week in the cup final. Do you feel you deserved a little bit of luck that you got into half time? I don't think that was a bit of luck before half time. I think we've had a bit of uh, we've had a lot of bad luck with some bad refereeing, but I mean. You know, I mean, when we went down there and we got done there on uh, when we got the two points for us holding down, they keep holding us down. And uh, the thing is, if they, if they let us up, we'd have scored straight away. But you're making some of your own mistakes as well, aren't you? Well, we're making a few mistakes ourselves. And uh, I mean, we suffered with the loss of Davison for that 10 minutes. But the thing is, uh, if we can get this ball wide, I think we're going to have some problems this half. Let's see, Tony. Thanks very much. Thank we're you. back in the action with John. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Getting the ball wide and the players keeping their discipline. They can ill afford anybody to go off for another ten minutes. Eight points is the deficit at the start of the half. And both sides at the moment are relying on the teams that began the game. The scrums in the first half went Castleford's way, three to one. And Kevin Beardmore won two against the head. But Warrington did concede those nine penalties against Castleford six. There's Drummond, trying to thread his way through. And the first penalty of the half will go to Warrington. Errors in play, Castleford made it seven in the first half to Warrington's four. That's a rather surprising statistic. Tama 
Martin Blake involved twice and flings out the long ball, which Ronnie Dwayne did well to take head high. Now Davidson, let's see what he can do in an attacking sense. So he did well to find Thornley. And Tony Marchant will feel better for having made the tackle which brought Thornley back there. But Warrington is still moving it with Blake. And he's a real live wire. He's got 10 tries this season. He's now got 11. Just the start Warrington wanted to the second half. And their Australian halfback has been so prolific this season. He's got another one to add to the tally. Well, Warrington now know they've got to get back into the game. A try is important from here. And the ball is moved out. Blake takes on John Joyner, dances underneath him. Stands the full back for dead and scores a try, which means that Warrington are back in the game. The ball now coming out and let's just show the power and Warrington know they've got to go forward. Roach makes the inroads, Blake takes the ball off him, ducks under two tackles, leaves the full back for dead and crosses for an excellent try. John Woods has added on two points to go with Blake's try. So it's 14-12. What a game we've got now. Another penalty given, but at least Warrington's coach must be a little happier than he was at the start of the half. Tony, that the kind of start you wanted? Well, that's just what I needed. One good try before half time and one after. That's what just, just, just up our street now. We can start to get a roll on now. We'll be okay. Tony, thanks very much. John? That's just certainly the start they wanted. Um, it's easy to see why these two have been among the most consistent first division clubs over the years. The two of only five to have retained first division status ever since 1973. And now. There is going to be another penalty, another two penalties against Warrington. And they're starting now to use their mouths a little bit, and that's always a bad sign. Well, that's why it's important where captains should come into play, and the captain should really have the authority to tell the players, accept the decision and walk away from it, because otherwise it's aggravation. And as you've just seen now, Castleman have got a further 10 yards, which means that the ground kick is kickable. And that's not a very good sign for Warrington. It's a good chance for Martin Kettridge to hoist his fourth goal. And to take Castleford back into a four-point lead. And it's exactly what he's done. And again, it's in discipline that's cost Warrington those two points. So as John Woods kicks off, let's find out what Daryl Van der Velde thinks about it all down there. Daryl is getting very tight now. Yeah, we've made some mistakes in the first five minutes of the half, you know, and probably the last five minutes of the first half we had them in too. So, you know, two disappointing tries, but, uh, you know, we'll hang in. We've just got to control the football, get the ball down this end of the field and, uh, on, and, and score the tries as they come. Thanks very much. And that was the voice of Mick Morgan booming out there as well. Blake putting boot to ball, a very effective kick as well. That's a superb tactical kick from the Australian scrum half. Well, he's had a superb game with scrum half. He scored that uh, quite brilliant try, and that was a marvellous kick then, gaining them relief, and at the same time putting them firmly in Castleford's heart. There's Phil Blake here in his second spell with Warrington. 11 tries now this season, so he's made an impact. put in <laughs> out 
Back comes the ball for Cass. And then the nickname Classic Cass over the years. But uh, they equally can be infuriating to their supporters. Again, Ward wants that ball. And he's really enjoyed himself this afternoon. Tony Marchant has picked it up. Slippery underfoot, and whenever players try to change direction, they come to grief. For England, it's the ball away for Bouvroid, who looks to be hurt in that tackle. And I don't think he's going to be able to play the ball. Perhaps got a stud in the nose. Play can continue now, and uh, Giles Bouvroid has had the treatment he required. Penalty is for Castleford. Davison picked the ball up in an offside position. It's exactly halfway through the second half. The call was for two points. And the answer is given by Martin Ketteridge. Well, he's a prolific goal kicker, and it's 18 12. Castleford has stretched him into a good advantage. And Martin Ketteridge, two tries, and now 38 goals to go with it this season. He's a big lad, six feet, 14 stone 10, and he knows to where to put boot to ball. Ball could actually go dead. It's an awkward one for David Plange. But he'll certainly run it out beyond his own line. And here he goes in full flight. David Plange. And fine tackle by Blake, the man who put in the kick. And now Boothroyd wants to go on the outside of his man, who is McGinty. Two tackles gone and four to come. Oh, Boothroyd ducked underneath a couple of challenges. And Kevin Ward, and that time he took his eye off the ball at the critical moment. Well, that was unfortunate because he's nearly had a perfect day this afternoon. He's made one or two telling runs. Every run he's made has uh, taken two or three to pull him down. And he, more than most, has worked very, very hard. Roach for Warrington. Support was coming in from Thornley. Well, it's still anybody's game. It really is at 18-12. Warrington, as you said, are just beginning to piece their game together a bit better. Good tackle by Kevin Beardmore then on uh, Mike Gregory. So the last tackle, and again Blake will think of the kick. Tries for touch this time and finds a good one as well. Blake has probably been Warrington's outstanding performer. He certainly has. He's been the little general behind their scrum, and uh, he's been uh, at the helm of most things, pushing little kicks forward, making telling breaks, and scoring that super try. So down by the right-hand touchline, Bobby Beardmore puts in to the scrum. It's a crucial one for Castleford to win this, or he never even put it in. <laughs> They were all biting the turf without the ball. Ten minutes to go, and in fact a penalty has been given to Castleford, so that's relief for them. One or two just beginning to look a little uh, battle-weary. Kettridge's goals could make the difference at the end of the day. Tackle that was on Gibbs by Davidson. And he's still there though. Joiner. Now the Belcher. 
Lovely ball from Belcher to Horro, who did well to keep his footing. Well, about eight or nine minutes uh, to go. Depending on any injury time that might be added on. Joyner. Oh, delayed the pass and then sprints for the corner himself. John Joyner. And he's got plans over. Yes! So spectacular. But it was beautifully set up by John Joyner and delightfully finished off by the man who likes to do things in style. Well, the game has needed something with inspiration, and uh, John Joyner certainly showed that. He took the pass, dummy it twice, kept the defence standing still, then went for the corner, but at all times he was aware of who was with him. And Pange is there, headlong into the corner for a marvellous try. Well, he did well to keep his feet. He's well, they needed something straight away, and John Joyner knew at this moment in time. He made the half break, goes through it full on the burst, the defence coming across, and Pange is there to finish it off. He is a real idol of the Castleford fans. And Martin Kettridge could be about to kick his sixth goal and take the game out of Warrington's reach. And we shall see from this angle. Difficult kick. And he's not got it this time. But even so, Castleford must be breathing a lot easier now at 22-12. What does Daryl van der Velde think now? Well, that wasn't bad. The young man and the old man, Daryl. Yeah, very, very good. Very good time to come up with a try, too. Uh, John's been out of the game for a little bit. I was a bit concerned, but he beautiful work to cut the players out there and, and plan just finish it off with his good work. Think so you've got it now? The game goes for 80 minutes, so we'll, we'll come back in about five minutes, ten, seven minutes time, and I'll tell you. We'll come back, and that's back to John now. Wise words indeed. The match is never over until that final whistle. Well, Belcher here has run very well. Certainly had a more impressive game today than he did in the Yorkshire Cup final. He did, yes. He's fielded the ball with confidence. He's always been prepared to join in the line, and uh, he's made some telling breaks. Good catch once more from Lyon, the young man they signed from uh, Witness on the tribunal. Well, Warrington really have to do something special now, and Des Drummond is just the man to do it. He really sets off now after that pass, and can he get past Belcher? Well, Belcher half got him first time, and then completed the job. That was a real chance then. Oh, and Blake flings out a really long pass, and coming up into the line, oh, that's a disastrous slip for Warrington. And Kevin, Kevin Tamati hanging his head. Well, I know, but it, it, it is always difficult. Players are always looking to miss out men instead of passing to the obvious one next to them. And that was a classic example, although at the same time, every player must be aware that the ball could be there at any time. Well, Warrington, deep in their own half, know that they've got to move the ball out wide, right across the Castlewood defence, drawing men after men. And Drummond takes the ball on the outside, and now he knows he's now 70, 80 yards to run. He slows down into the tackle by Belcher to go around him, but Belcher half knocks him over, and that's enough to stop the try. Here come Warrington once more with Roach. The Balmain forward. Healing it and chances once more. And Warrington have brought on their own sub, Mark Roberts. Here he is at number 15. And well, that's the last desperate ploy, maybe. Well, Roberts has got a good try scoring record in the game. But how Warrington would need one from anybody now. And Davidson's there. Davidson plunges over the line in between the three Castleford men and full credit to the Australian Les Davidson there. He's had his bad moments in this match, this is a good one. Well, Cash, yes, Davidson goes through again. He has figured in most things and uh, that's a try that they'd be most welcome and there's still chance as far as he's concerned. It's his second try for Warrington and, uh, well, 
John Woods doesn't take long to try, attempt to kick his goals and that one just skims the outside of the post John Woods himself can't believe it he thought it had gone through well he smiles now but they were absolutely right it flicked the outside I would have said well Davidson picks it up on the play of the ball forces himself over a bit of slack defensive work on behalf of Castlewood and that means Warrington is still in with a chance So, can Castleford snatch a late and convincing and clinching try? Horro here, faced by Drummond, and he's got round Drummond. Shane Horro. Well, he was very, very close there to celebrating his debut for the club. Samson, Bob Beardmore. Oh, came the other way, Bob Beardmore. Good thinking, support now from Dean Samson. And we've got to try in the last home game here. Again, the Beardmore's involved in Kevin Ward. Well, he deserves a try, actually, and I think he might just get one. Is he there? The referee says no, he was right on the line, Kevin Ward. Well, that ball's continued to go back, so they're still all right, and it's Kevin Beardmore, five yards out. Well, they're almost queuing up now, desperate times for Warrington to defend, and the attempt at the drop goal is from Grant Anderson. But he's popped it over. It wriggled over the crossbar, did that? Blake has got one try already. Has to release it, really. And now John Woods, Gregory, and Gregory's there for the line. Up, oh, and the ball went straight into a pair of castled hands, those of Gary Belcher, and that surely was Warrington's last hope. the hooter the small boys are on the pitch Castleford have won and their coach Darrell van der Velde must be delighted that his side is preserved there and beaten record in the league oh, we said we come back Darrell and you have won it yeah very, we've done it tough but I tell you what I think they played well they've like, a little bit tired towards the end but uh, the points are on the board that's the main thing well the match went very much Castleford's way in the end although there was only a seven point margin but uh, that late try from David Plange was the difference, although Davidson came back with one for Warrington. But five goals for Martin Kettridge and finally a drop goal from Grant Anderson have given Castleford that victory, which has taken David Watkins into their dressing room. An uncompromising battle here this afternoon, but back on winning ways of Castleford after their disappointment last week. And uh, my man of the match, uh, Stone's better man of the match award this afternoon goes to Kevin Moore. Well done, Kevin. Disappointed last week, but no doubt uh, delighted with the way in which you performed this afternoon. Yeah, man, not only myself, but uh, the team as well. You know, the first game was like, uh, we got lost a bit, probably in the second half and back in the first half, but uh, the defence kept us going like and uh, just grabbed the try when we needed one and uh, put the points in the end. Well, well done, Kevin, and well done, Castle. Cheers, Kevin.